Fun 107, Michael and Maddie. It's Tuesday morning, March 26th, 2024. And this time hop is brought to you by a Kushnet Flower Company now taking orders for Easter Sunday. Happy birthday to Michael and Pirioli. He plays Christopher on the Sopranos. He is 58 years old today. Actress Jennifer Gray. Happy birthday, Jennifer. I'm scared of walking out of this room and never feeling the rest of my whole life the way I feel when I'm with you. Thank you very much. It's awfully nice of you. 64 years old. Aerosmith's lead singer, Steven Tyler, that voice, 76 today. Former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is 84. 24 years ago today, American Beauty swept the Academy Awards. You don't get to tell me what to do ever again. Winning Best Picture, Best Director, Best Screenplay, and Kevin Spacey winning for Best Actor. <laughs> On this date, in 1995, rapper Easy e died of AIDS. He was 31 years old. Easy was one of the founders of the rap group NWA with Ice Cube and Dr. Dre. Six years ago, toxicology reports revealed that Prince had fentanyl in his body at levels described as, quote, exceedingly high. Fairhaven's Kmart closed on this date seven years ago today and two years ago. President Biden accidentally, and it's been as windy as it has been day after day after day. It's weird. It's cold. I feel like wind is pretty standard around this time of year. It just sucks every so time. Many, so many windy days in a row. It sucks. Definitely not good for the hair days today. <laughs> uh, we're going to see some clouds today and highs up right around uh, the low to mid 40s. It's 39 now. Bring in your taste of Hollywood. Right here to the South Coast. And we are here for it. We're spilling the tea with Maddie's Entertainment Update on Fun 107. Well, I think yesterday was shocking for a lot of people. Officials raided two of Sean P. Diddy Combs' homes yesterday as part of a federal sex trafficking investigation. Led by Homeland Security, the raid was carried out just four months after the rap mogul's ex-girlfriend, singer Cassie, accused him of sex trafficking. Helicopters and agents were seen swarming his L.A. mansion yesterday. Footage of the scene appeared to show some men, later identified as Combs's sons, detained and waiting outside the Homeby Hills house. Officials were also present at the Miami residence. Combs was in Florida at the time of the raid, and officials reportedly seized his phones before he was scheduled to leave for a trip to the Caribbean. Four Jane Doe's and one John Doe already sat for interviews with Southern District of New York investigators for a probe related to alleged sex trafficking, domestic violence, and racketeering. And more interviews are scheduled. Attorney Tyrone Blackburn, who represents two of the accusers, uh, music producer Rodney Jones and Lisa Gardner, says it's about time. Sometimes justice delayed is not justice denied so long as justice ultimately arrives. So it's not clear whether Homeland Security's uh, search is related to any of the allegations raised in the several civil lawsuits filed in the past four months against Combs. But, I mean, what else would it be about, you know? Um, Combs has denied any wrongdoing in each of the four cases against him. Still, he stepped down from the chairmanship of his Revolt TV media company last year as more than a dozen companies filed his e-commerce, uh, or excuse me, fled his e-commerce platform. Uh, a new video has surfaced of Diddy after his homes were raided. And he wasn't in handcuffs or on the ground or anything like that, but he was just kind of pacing back and forth at the Miami airport where eyewitnesses say that Diddy and some other people got stopped by the feds. His uh, private jet had been reported like fleeing the country. But it sounds like he was stopped in Miami. So, I don't he was, know. He was minutes away from being oh, in the Caribbean. Oh, he was minutes away from getting it's out wild. of here. Yeah, and they managed to snag him at Miami Airport. What is he um, thinking? Like, it's just, he's it's so sad. so much to lose. Like, what is he but doing? But this is like decades and decades of cases. Like, the first one dates back to 1993. Wow. So this isn't like something new that he got into. Like, this is something that he's been 
if if it's really true, he's been doing for decades. So it's very disturbing. I can't even read the lawsuits against him on air because they're just too X-rated. It's but it, it's so R. Kelly ish. It is very R. Kelly ish, and it is. If you read the claims from some of these people, it will make your skin crawl. Like Ugh. if these are, if these are true allegations, these are some heavy, heavy, life changing allegations. Like this man is going away for a very long time. If wasted if talent, these man, are real, you know. So Why? it's it's just very shocking. You know, you never want to hear anything like this happen on either side of the coin. And it was a rough day for P. Diddy yesterday. It sounds like justice is catching up to him. So it's a little scary. Sasha Baron Cohen, you know, the very weird, funny guy, is denying the latest claims about him made by Rebel Wilson. You might remember her from Pitch Perfect. And yesterday she took to her Instagram story to reveal that the Borat star is the A-lister that she refers to as a bleep hole. In her upcoming memoir, Rebel Rising, she said, I will not be bullied or silenced by high priced lawyers or PR crisis managers, crisis managers. This bleep that I'm talking about in one chapter of my book is Sasha Baron Cohen. Following the reveal, Cohen released a statement denying her claims, saying, while we appreciate the importance of speaking out, these are false claims are directly contradicted by extensive detailed evidence uh, including documents, film footage, eyewitness accounts. I guess in her book, she really reams into Sasha Baron Cohen about, I guess, a specific incident that must have happened. Hmm. Um, Wilson teased the information in an Instagram video. She said, when I first came to Hollywood, people were like, yeah, I have a no uh, bleep policy. I don't work with bleeps. I was like, oh, yeah, that sounds sensible, logical. But then it really sunk in what they were meaning by that. Older people in the industry... Because oh, I worked wow. with a shots fired. I worked with a massive bleep, and yeah, I definitely have a no bleep policy now. A chapter on said bleep was <laughs> chapter twenty three. <laughs> the guy was a massive bleep. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I guess she also previously made claims against him back in twenty fourteen, where she accused him of repeatedly asking her to do nude scenes in a film. Oh man, she said he is so outrageous. Every single day. Well, he's definitely outrageous. He's no very outrageous. That. He's got a weird sense of humor. He's just a very oddball person. He'd, he'd plead guilty to that, I'm thinking. Yeah. But she, yeah. Oh, what is going on in Hollywood, guys? <laughs> what is pigs. happening? Like, I think Hollywood has always been this weird, but now everything is documented. So now we're just like getting a firsthand account of everything. <laughs> Remember when uh, Sasha Baron Cohen had the billboard on 195, the unauthorized billboard? Yes. I was just going to say his lawyers Solar are... Solar Therapeutics, yes, right? Yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah, he's got a pretty busy team over there. Yeah. Rebel Rising will be released on April 2nd, if you guys want to read that chapter. <laughs> Euphoria Season 3, delayed at HBO. This is going to bum a lot of people out. This is such a, a big show for a lot of people. HBO and Sam Levinson remain committed to making an exceptional third season, said an HBO spokesperson. In the interim, we are allowing our in-demand cast to pursue other opportunities. The script still being written. The news comes after a report that the show's third season has been scrapped entirely. Production on the show's third season had long been delayed in part due to the Hollywood strike and uh, there was actually the death of Angus Cloud who was one of the big stars on the show back in July of last year. So it looks like they're going to delay it one more time and hopefully you know Euphoria fans will get to see a third season because I, that show just exploded on the scene when it came out. Well, I didn't even know there was a second season. I thought there was just one and done, and now we're on number three. I also didn't see either. Zendaya so. is incredible. She's I mean. phenomenal. The, the Sydney Sweeney, like that's where Sydney Sweeney got that's big. Right. Yeah. Um, a lot of the names in that in that show are just becoming huge, huge stars. More entertainment news on the Fun 107. Oh, God. Fun 107, Michael and Maddie, and breaking news overnight, uh, a, a container ship uh, that was leaving Maryland earlier this morning hit one of the columns on the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Maryland and it took down the whole bridge. In seconds. This is, it's a, a massive bridge and 
honestly, like we're looking at the video in here this morning and it. It's with, hard to watch. It is. And it's so, um, it, it reminds me, it's like, like something you'd see in a Spider-Man movie. Yeah. You know, like where the whole bridge right. goes, it looks fake. It does not look real. You're right. It looks like a Hollywood film, but uh, it is certainly not. So uh, they're saying that at this time they're looking for 20 people that they believe to be in the water right now. So those people that were in cars on the bridge at the time that the bridge mm -hmm. struck was struck by the, the ship. Looks like a lot more, no? Just 20 people? 20, 20 uh, people okay. that, that, are, that are unaccounted for right now. Um, How can they know that information? I don't know. Great question. It's, it's, a, it's a great question. Unless um, there's cameras on the bridge that they're using probably. and stuff like that. But yeah. Yeah. What a, what a scary, scary thing. So now, you know, so it's just, you know... Again, so the the bridge is like gone. It's just gone. Like there isn't a single piece of this bridge that stayed standing. Which is the, like, it's so bizarre to me. So uh, the video is, is being shared online. And, you know, it's it, you can see like the massive steel structure coming down. The, the vehicles falling into the water. Uh, fire officials say one vehicle is... is as big as a tractor trailer. Uh, it says multiple people also fell into the water. Maryland authorities confirmed that all lanes of traffic closed in both directions. Yeah, I mean, there's no lane. Yeah. It's gone. There's nowhere to go. Bridge opened in 1977, carries Interstate 695 over the river, which is a busy shipping area. Um, Water is cold. It, it's the, the biggest thing. It's about 47 degrees. You mm -hmm. were in the water yesterday, Gazelle, right? It's 41 and I couldn't breathe. One can survive in that kind of condition for roughly an hour before hypothermia sets in. And then, of course, you have the darkness of trying to find anybody who may need help. And then you've got the debris from the bridge. That's true. The debris, I didn't even think of that. Coming down on the cars. And, you know, it, it probably doesn't all come down all at once. Mm -hmm. So people are in, in there and the stuff is, oh, it's just a nightmare. Mm-hmm. So our, uh, our thoughts for sure for the people yeah. down in Maryland this morning and those first responders trying to save Fun 107, Michael and Maddie and Nicki Minaj is coming to the garden in a couple of weeks. And thanks to Almeida Lawn and Maintenance, we have a ton of tickets to give away this week on Michael and Maddie. Let's go. So if you want to win some of these. You just got to go to the Fun 107 app and enter to win. And we could be calling you and saying, hey, you're winning a pair of tickets. We're going to call our winner this morning. And uh, I believe she's on the line right now. To Buzzards Bay, Desi Halstead is listening. Good morning, Desi. Good morning. So uh, what do you, are you a student? Where do you, uh, you live in Buzzards Bay? Do you go to school at Upper Cape Tech? Yeah, I go to Upper Cape. What do you, uh, what are you studying there? I'm in the cosmetology program. Very nice. nice. Do you listen to Nicki Minaj while you study? Yeah, yeah, I love Nicki Minaj. I've been listening to her since I was a kid. That's awesome. Well, how would you like yeah. to see her live? I would love to. I'm so excited. Congratulations, girl. You are going to see her live at the Garden <laughs> next month. Who are you going to bring? Thank you so much. My mama. Oh, oh very yeah, nice. nice. So mom likes Nicki Minaj yeah. too, huh? She loves her more than I do. Ah, that's great. <laughs> well, have a great time at Nicki Minaj, Desi Halstead of Buzzards Thank Bay. You very much. Have a little uh, good time with your mom. We want to see Nicki Thanks, Minaj. Baby. All right. And have a great day at Upper Cape Tech. Nicki Minaj <laughs> week here on, on Michael and Maddie. Brought to you again by Almeida Lawn and Maintenance. If you want to win some of these tickets, get on that Fun 107 app. Coming up on 652, Phil Devitt with a look at this morning's headlines. New Bedford is a step closer to dropping residency requirements for municipal employees. Last night, the City Council Ordinance Committee voted unanimously to support Mayor John Mitchell's amendment, eliminating the requirement for about 150 city management positions. The mayor has said that requirement is making it difficult to hire people. The Standard Times reports this won't apply to city boards and commissions. Folks on those will still have to be city residents, and state law requires police officers and firefighters to 
to live within 15 miles of the city. This now heads to the city council for full approval. Financially struggling Stewart Healthcare is closing New England Sinai Hospital in Stoughton next Tuesday, April 2nd. Channel 25 reported the company blamed the closure on high costs for labor, materials due to inflation, and the lingering impact of the COVID pandemic. Stewart also owes about $50 million in unpaid rent. The company has nine hospitals in Massachusetts, including St. Anne's in Fall River and Morton in Taunton, and is reportedly considering leaving the state. Families staying in a state-run overflow shelter in Massachusetts will have to reapply monthly to remain there. The Healy administration said that starting in May, they'll have to show they're actively seeking work authorization or alternative housing. The emergency shelter system has been past capacity for months which has required the state to establish overflow sites. There's a massive emergency response after a cargo ship crashed into a bridge in Baltimore, causing the span to collapse. They're reporting that the middle section of the bridge collapsed into the water, and there are unknown amount of people and or vehicles in the water. Video footage shows the moment the 1.6 mile Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed after one of its supports was struck by the large vessel around 1.30 this morning. And the Powerball jackpot is rolling over again. There was no grand prize winner in Monday night's drawing, so the next time to strike it rich will be Wednesday with an estimated $865 million up for grabs. In sports, the Celtics lost to the Hawks 120-118. to Boston tries to beat Atlanta again on Thursday. Red Sox beat the Texas Rangers in spring training last night 9-2. to They play again today at 2 o'clock. And the Bruins are in Florida to play the Panthers tonight at 7. Traffic and weather next. From the Chart Oak Tavern Newsroom, I'm Phil Devitt for Fun 107. Fun 107, Michael and Maddie get some clouds out there this morning. And uh, temperature is going to be kind of like a carbon copy of yesterday with uh, highs in the low to mid 40s. So the big news yesterday was that uh, Dartmouth will be getting a Chick-fil-A and stage one of many was in the works. So for Stage the, one of many what? Uh, pl- for the planning board, the planning process, the, you know, s- making sure the blueprints are so, Oh, perfect. stage one of many stages for Chick-fil-A is okay. what yes. you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Comes. Gotcha. And if you're familiar with the, the old Sears Auto Center, that's been a, a ghost town in that corner of uh, the Dartmouth Mall parking lot. That's, I mean, in my opinion... That is a gold mine. It is. And ne- I, I just, my brain would never even think to like no. go there. And this is all part of kind of like uh, the restoration project of that Fawns Corner area of really living it up a bit. And uh, I think Chick-fil-A, I mean, you don't no, no longer have to go to Fall River. If you're from, you know, the New Bedford, Dartmouth area, you don't have to go to Seekonk anymore. So yesterday, I'm, I'm trying to get in. I, I need to get like the deets on this. And I call a guy who's on the Dartmouth media board. I don't even know. And he goes, well, if you want all the information, they're having the live Zoom right now. So I said, honey, cancel our plans. We're not watching TV tonight. I need to get into the Zoom. And I, you know, it wasn't easy to find for a public forum. It was not easy. I had to do a little bit of like backdoor, like on the D- town of Dartmouth page. So what meeting are you watching? The Dartmouth planning the, board? Oh, yeah. Riveting Rib- stuff. Riveting. riveting stuff. Right? Yeah. And I'm there. I got my little notebook, and I'm writing down things. And I'm scared that I'm accidentally going to like hit the microphone button or the, the 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 video. I don't want anybody to see my face. And <laughs> I don't know. I, even though it's a public board, there was only 14 people in there, so I felt because out of nobody place. cares. Well, Chick Fil A. <laughs> nobody knew though. Yeah, nobody goes. Oh, I wonder what the planning board is doing. I am this definitely evening. tuning into that tonight at 6:30. <laughs> I, I will tell you though, it gave every answer that I needed. Everything from zoning to parking lot issues to. Uh, where are they going to put the kitchen in the Chick-fil-A? So Everything. I find it interesting. Do you think this is going to be well-received? Yes. By oh, Dharma? yeah. Well, because I'm, I just, the one thing that I've gathered from the South Coast is that the, they cherish mom and pop places. True, but ch- uh, fast food's different. I guess. Like that, the fast food does well. Uh, here on the are South Are there Coast. areas on the South Coast where fast food chains are not allowed? Mattapoise and Marion, yeah. Rochester. Yeah. Westport. There are so many in Rhode Island. It's wild. So yeah. it's like you have a whole bunch of towns that don't allow it, which means that there's just clusters where they are allowed. So yeah. Route 2, it's like fast food city, well, baby. That's, that's appropriate. Like there yeah. should be areas that it's allowed and then there should be areas that are yeah. kept without that stuff. I will say. I'm usually a hater, 
on fast food. I I could mess with some chicky tendies. Oh, yeah, and Chick Fil A. They're they're good. Chick Fil A sealed the deal on my marriage. It you, did. This these are facts. It was a Valentine's Day. I just met my wife. I mean, like a couple months afterwards. So what do you get somebody in a fresh relationship? Yeah, that's right? a very important thing. Like you can't get you can't jump in too hard on that. <laughs> so I saw this ad that Chick Fil A was doing instead of box of chocolates, box of nugs. I mean, come on! And weren't they heart shaped boxes? Heart or? shaped that go all the way down to Plymouth. You know, I remember I left. Which the, makes it more romantic. Left the show early so I can get first in line to get it. Yeah. See, if it was back. just in Dartmouth, it wouldn't have been as meaningful. Exactly, and that's the whole point of this. Yeah. And I will tell you what, I got bonus points at her workplace at that time. <laughs> Everybody got flowers here and there. No, she got a bouquet. Of chicken nugs, and that's what I'm talking about. So the that particular location you're talking about, the former Sears Tire yes. building, it's good because, first of all, it's on the corner of the two major, you know, the, the it's you got Route Six and you've got Fonts Corner Road. Yes, and then there's enough room that the the whole formula for Chick Fil A is the double drive through. Correct. And so there's plenty of room for that. It's, it's an ideal spot. It really is. I, as as. I'm going to be honest with you. As boring as this meeting kind of was, it was interesting at the same time because you kind of see the the backbone of how a chain restaurant or a restaurant in general is built from the ground up mm -hmm. from the blueprints. And they, they're they so good at getting the smallest details right down to, hey, what if it rains too much? We're going to need a, a place for like the water to kind of like, you know, uh, funnel out. So, you know, they're like, all right, well, we got in contact with the DPW, blah, 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 blah. It was just interesting, right down to can we fit two school buses going through? Solid question. Think Why? Of, what do you mean? Because Dartmouth High School, well, uh, you got staying right there. You got a lot of schools in the area that if they want to go through the drive through or through the drive through. When have you ever know. seen a school bus but through the drive through? I, I, think it, I think it's more about just making sure that there's enough space. There is, because you still have to go around the building yeah. to get out, is what I'm saying. How many times, though, did you win a game, like an away game, and you get back <laughs> on the bus, and there's a oh, rumor going yeah. around, we're going to shop at McDonald's? Yes, no, you're not. You never yes. stop at McDonald's. Oh, my coach back. did, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it is 7.53. Phil Devin with a look at this morning's headlines. New Bedford has had trouble filling some city management positions. That could change if the city council approves an amendment to a requirement that those employees live in the city. A council ordinance committee voted unanimously to support Mayor John Mitchell's amendment Monday night. It now goes to the full council for approval. Stewart Healthcare will close one of its hospitals amid its financial struggles. New England Sinai Hospital in Stoughton is slated to shut down April 2nd. The company blames skyrocketing marketing costs, among other problems. Governor Maura Healy wants Stewart out of the state. It runs nine hospitals here in total, including St. Anne's in Fall River and Morton in Taunton. East Providence Mayor Bob De Silva is urging out-of-towners to support his city's small businesses. He said people have been avoiding the Rhode Island city, fearful of traffic delays due to the closure of the westbound side of the Washington Bridge. The mayor told NBC10 he's working with the governor's office to develop a marketing campaign to let people know that aside from some rush hour issues, traffic is manageable. De Silva said he wants to get the word out that East Providence is open for business. In Baltimore this morning, rescue crews remain on the scene after a container ship struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Living not far from the bridge is Kylie, who described what happened overnight. My room was shaking. I sat up real fast, held onto my bed. I thought it was an earthquake happening. A massive collapse followed as the ship then caught fire and sank. A number of vehicles are reported to have fallen into the water. While there's been no official word yet on deaths or injuries, the incident is being treated as a mass casualty event. The Baltimore Bridge was about 1.6 miles long. To put that into perspective, the Braga Bridge in Fall River is 1.25 miles, and the Bourne Bridge is about 2,300 feet long. And the FAA is warning of potential delays for commercial flights during next month's total solar eclipse. The rare astronomical event will happen April 8th with the path of totality across a dozen states. Passengers can expect delays between April 7th and 10th as people flock to the best areas to witness the eclipse. In sports, the Boston Red Sox beat the Texas Rangers in spring training last night 9-2. to They play again today just after 2 o'clock. The Celtics lost to the Hawks 120-118. to They'll try to beat Atlanta again on Thursday. The Bruins, meanwhile, in Florida to play the Panthers tonight at 7. Traffic and weather next. 
From the Chart Oak Tavern Newsroom, I'm Phil Devitt for Fun 107. Michael and Maddie, it's Tuesday morning, and that means it is time for Tuesday's Child. We're so proud to do this and team up with the Massachusetts Adoption Resource Exchange. And we want to thank our sponsors of Tuesday's Child, McDonald's, First Citizens Federal Credit Union, Kennedy Donovan Center, and Cottage Street Motors. And today we're telling you about 16-year-old Daziah, who her social worker says, she, this is a funny kid, really friendly, really outgoing, uh, just a fun person to be around, pleasant to be around. And she does have some ongoing medical um, issues that she needs to deal with. She struggles with spina bifida. I feel like when some people think spina bifida, they think that I'm like in a wheelchair. They think I can't walk. They think I don't like talk sometimes. It's, it's different with me because I'm able to walk, I talk, I'm able to do most things that regular teenage girls do. So I think it's just the part that scares people. That's the part that scares people about it. So, you know, if you're wondering what kind of a person Desire is, her dream is to go to school, go to college, and then listen to this. What I want to do in the next couple of years, I want to go to college to be a nurse. I think I would want to help kids. Kids like me, like with my disability and just disabilities in general. Just some of the, the challenges that they go through with like spina bifida. Cause some, some of the kids my age have it worse than I do. I would want to show them that they could get through it even though like it might seem hard, but they can get through it. I mean, how meaningful is that? That is outstanding. Desire, 16 years old. And she told us what kind of a family thinks she thinks that she might fit in the best. I think what would be a good fit for me is people that understand me and understand, like, the stuff that I've been through and under understand me and, like, my disability. And are not, like, really, like, scared of me, like, like scared of me because I have my disability. If you want to find out more about 16-year-old Desire, you can find out more at fun107.com. And again... Tuesday's Child brought to you by South Coast McDonald's, First Citizens Federal Credit Union, Kennedy Donovan Center, and Cottage Street Motors on Fun 107. A check on the headlines now with Phil Devitt. New Bedford could drop the residency requirement for some city management jobs. The City Council Ordinance Committee unanimously supported Mayor John Mitchell's proposed amendment last night and now heads to the full council for approval. The hope is this will open up hard-to-fill positions to more people who might be interested in the jobs but don't live in the city. It looks like Stewart Healthcare is closing a hospital, New England Sinai in Stoughton, due to shut down next week as the company deals with major financial problems. Problems. Stewart runs nine hospitals statewide, including St. Anne's in Fall River and Morton in Taunton. Chick-fil-A is planning a Dartmouth location. The planning board hearing Monday about a proposal to put the fast food restaurant at the former Sears Auto Center near the Dartmouth Mall. You can see the full story on the Fun 107 app. Boston University grad students are on strike. About 3,000 students who teach and research at the school began the strike on Monday. The Boston University Graduate Workers Union asking the university for better benefits and pay. Union leaders say they have been negotiating with Boston University for nine months before the strike. There's an ongoing multi-agency rescue operation underway in Baltimore after a container ship struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge. A massive collapse followed as the ship then caught fire and sank. The onboard crew of that ship apparently not injured. A number of vehicles are reported to have fallen into the water from the bridge when the collapse happened around 1.30 a.m. While there's been no word yet on deaths or injuries, the incident is being treated as a mass casualty event. The governor of Maryland declaring a state of emergency this morning. And a seventh grade math teacher and army veteran in Texas has changed his name to literally anybody else. And he's trying to get on the upcoming presidential ballot. The 35-year-old from the Fort Worth area was born Dustin Ebby, but he successfully got a judge to sign off on the name change. Mr. Els has already filed with the Federal Election Commission and is now working to get on state ballots as an independent candidate. He says he understands it's a long shot to get on state ballots at this slate of a date, but he hopes word will spread and voters will write him in come November. His campaign website is literallyanybodyelse.com. 
In sports, Boston Red Sox go for a second straight win against the Texas Rangers today at 2. The Bruins hope to snap a two-game skid tonight when they play the Panthers in Florida. And the Celtics, who lost to the Hawks 120-118 to last night, try their luck with Atlanta again on Thursday. Traffic and weather next. From the Chart Oak Tavern Newsroom, I'm Phil Devitt for Fun 107. Fun 107, Michael and Maddie. So I put up a picture on the gram last night. <laughs> Got Your a lot one of attention. post every other couple months. <laughs> you know what? I save it for good stuff. Yeah, that's Rather fair. Rather than putting my, you know, here's my chicken parm tonight. Hey, hey. <laughs> I'm not dogging. <laughs> no judgment. Um, no, but like I try to come out swinging and I'll, I'll come out with heavy pictures every time. Um, but no, I was, I was in New Bedford last night and I saw something I've never seen before. And I think a lot of people haven't seen before. And so I took a picture of it, put it up, and think people are kind of excited. So I took a picture of the MBTA sign at the New Bedford train station, which is like, whoa. <laughs> it's, it's big. Like, it is suddenly feeling real. This that train? This South Coast Rail is really happening because you got to understand, Maddie. You're new to the South Coast, relatively. I've been here for over 25 years. We've been talking about South Coast Rail for the entire time. Wow. For 25 years. And that's only since I got here. I mean, I'm sure it was before that. But this has been like one of those things where like the politicians in Boston would be like, yeah, 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 you're going to be getting South Coast Rail. <laughs> and then like yeah. nothing happens. Right. Ever. Ever. <laughs> Year after year after year. And then, like, they'll be talking about, yeah, 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 you guys are going to get a casino. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what changed. Like, what what is the, uh, I feel like over the past few years, it's been really ramping up. I think they finally got the funding from it to, to be, I think it was Deval Patrick. A um, few governors back that really started to get the ball in motion. But, it, I mean, it's it's here. Yeah. It really is like the sign. The sign's it's, there. It's legit. The sign is there. Which means it's real, which means it's happening. So I got to tell you, like, when I saw that sign last night, I felt a little pride. Mm -hmm. I really did. Like, it felt like New Bedford had I'm made it. I'm a big kid now. It had made it. Like, now it's, like, connected to the big city. It just felt very big city. Felt Trains city. Sound old. I agree. Like, and that's, well, it's true. Like, my, my comment with the picture was everything old is new again. Um, you're not wrong. Trains do feel old, but they offer so much. Like, for example, like my daughter goes to college in Boston. I was just going to say, I've taken the train in Boston so many times and the train in New York as well. Like it's so the convenient. The train in New York is awesome. It's so convenient. So good. So convenient. So like, you know, like my, my daughter's thinking about doing an internship at Children's Hospital in Boston this summer instead of me driving her up there because you can't park up there it's like yeah it's impossible she'd be losing like 80 dollars a day take the train right up boom done so a lot of people wondering when is it going to actually start rolling um they're doing test trains right now you know they're, they're already testing out the the safety systems and those trains are going like upwards of 80 miles an hour so stay away <laughs> um that's going to be happening throughout the spring and i i think by I, sometime this summer, you're going to see passengers on that train. My only question is, I remember we were talking about this recently. Didn't it say it was going to be like a three-hour trip to Boston? Or no. Something like that? Not three hours. I think it's going to be like... Because of the stops and stuff? Yeah, like I think between 90 and 120 minutes. All which right. by the time That's you drive horrible. up there, sit in traffic, find a parking space, you're free. It's 120 minutes right now to get... Road rage for free. <laughs> Same. So it's uh it's exciting. Like seeing the photo, I was like, really? This is like you can't it's really do, real. It's like when you send out the invitations to the wedding, <laughs> there's no backing out now. The invitations are out there. <laughs> the sign is up. The, what are they gonna do? The sign's up. <laughs> you can't pull the sign down. No, so if they run into uh, you know, any kind of a problem now, they gotta fix it. The sign is up. <laughs> it's not our fault. So that is Beyonce and Texas Hold'em and our thoughts are with the people down in Baltimore where they're dealing with this um, this tragedy where this, this cargo ship crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge and that thing 
collapsed. It looked like you you're watching like a Spider Man movie, like an action movie, and the you know it's, it's a, a scene of destruction or something. It's it's unbelievable. It's, it's really scary. It's the amount of videos I've been seeing pop up today. It's just like, oh my god, it's it's terrifying. And honestly, you know, knock on wood, but. I just get so nervous on this Washington Bridge now because the damage that has been done to the westbound side for them to say, like, hey, you can't even drive on it. Like, was there a moment where we could have had, like, a very terrible accident? Like, did we just miss it by the skin of our teeth? Like, that's kind of where I'm going. Yeah. And now we have all of the traffic on one side of the bridge, the eastbound side. And they're getting ready to ev- put even more lanes to try to alleviate some of the traffic. Yeah, they're going to put three lanes going both ways both on the ways. one side. Six lanes on yeah. the eastbound side. So, you know, a lot of people are asking the question, uh, can it do that? Like, can it handle all that weight? And it looks like uh, RIDOT, Rhode Island Department of Transportation, did respond uh, because the community kept asking. And they said, you know, a lot of testing was done and they said it's safe. What I did like was that 18 wheelers of a certain size will not be allowed to drive over the bridge. Oh, that's good. So that'll also alleviate some of the traffic. That'll alleviate some of the traffic. I don't know where they're going to go, though. It sounds like they're going to have to go through Providence, which is like, I don't need, like, are they going to fit? Like, that's a genuine question. I don't know. I don't know. Some of those, Um, like, East Providence? Well, so the. Uh, the original detour brought you over a different bridge, but it did bring you through a couple back streets. So, and I don't know how that happened. Like, I don't know where the eighteen wheelers went. I don't know if they went through Newport instead. I don't know if oh they my are. Goodness. I don't know if they're able to fit. Th- like, I just, I just genuinely don't know. But they will not be allowed to drive on the Washington Bridge once those lanes get made. And according to RIDOT, it's going to happen by next month. So Well, that can't happen soon enough for most it people, right? It cannot happen soon enough for me. Uh, but, y- yeah, like me and like many other commuters that have to go over the bridge, you think, you're, you think to yourself, okay, well, if the westbound side is not safe, <laughs> is well, the I, eastbound side safe? <laughs> I would hope that they gave that a good looking at before they made this call. I know, but you can't help but wonder when you drive over it every yeah. day and you're watching them demolish the westbound side. You're just kind of like, mm, okay, it's a scary thing. Really rolling the dice on this. Do you think, like, I'm being dead serious, the, the culture of Rhode Island, meaning the corruption, okay. and anything to do with... The mafia. <laughs> yeah, sure. Like, did that have anything to do with why that bridge wasn't constructed the right way? Yeah. I mean, that is the underlying rumblings that are going on in Rhode Island is that we were run by the mafia for so long and they had their hands in all of that. The infrastructure, uh, sewage, uh, the waste departments, like every, they had their hands in everything. Waste and department. do you really think that they were up to code on, do you think the mafia was up to code on things? And worrying, to, you know, for every last detail. You know, like, I, I doubt it. Yeah. Uh, so, obviously, you know, that is the underlying uh, rumblings of Rhode Island residents is that we're kind of, hey, we got great Italian food and we got great, we got great food. We got great <laughs> the good food. comes to the bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 